Let's do another example of completing the square. 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. According to the steps, first step is to do what? Move the 6. Move the 6 over. So I have 2x squared minus 7x is equal to negative 6. Wait, oh, and, and then square it? No. Why am I saying, why would I say divide by 2? Because this is the coefficient right here. What if this were 5x squared, you would do what? Divide everything by 5, right? So here I'm going to divide everything by 2. Do you see where completing the square may not be the best option for me in this problem? Because not only am I creating a fraction here, but what do you think is going to happen when I then have to divide this by 2 and square it for the next step? I get an even well, uglier fraction, can right? Can you just multiply by 1 half? I can. That's going to be the best way of doing it. But my issue with this is if you were completing the square and it causes you to have fractions, there's a better way of taking care of that. And that's what we're going to look at next time. But I do want you guys to see that even with fractions, these guys are workable. I have x squared minus 7 halves x is equal to negative 3. Now the third step is to complete the square. This is where I've got to figure out half of this guy squared and add it to both sides. So in my little thought bubble down here, I have negative 7 halves times 1 half squared. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. What does that give me? Negative 7 fourths squared, which equals a positive, always a positive. 49 over 16. 49 over 16. Do you all agree? Mm -hmm. So what will I add to both sides? 49 I'm going to add 49 over 16. Understand why you're adding that amount to both sides. Why did I add that amount to the left side? To complete the square. I did it to complete the square so that it factors as something squared, right? That's why I added this guy. Why did I add the 49 over 16 on the right side? To keep them same. To keep it balanced because what I do to one side of the equation, I do it to the other side. So that's why I've got that. Now going back a little bit further, I added this here so I could get a square, right? But why did I want a square? Why am I trying to create squares here when none existed before? So I can use the square root property. There's a reason for this. It's not because, oh, hey, about some kind of you know, mathematical property this works out. No, it's because I know where I'm going. If I can create a square, I can use the square root property. And I love the square root property. It helps me get my two answers very easily. Now, the factorization on the left side, you may say, Mr. Craig, I don't know. There's so many fractions. What did you have just before you squared? You had minus 7 fourths. That's what goes there. On the other side, you've got to worry about combining fractions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Multiply times 16 to get that LCD. What's negative 3 times 16? 48. Negative 48 plus 49 is what? Holy crap, it's 1. It's positive 1 over 16. Whew. Uh, wait, what am I going to do now? Square root Step property. five is to use the square root property to finish this. Love the square root property, right? Mm. Again, if you're thinking about getting a tattoo, just kidding, x minus 7 fourths equals what? plus or minus one-fourth, right? Well, now I've got to finish this guy. How do I finish this? By adding seven-fourths to the side. So where does it go? <laughs> when I move to the right side, where does it go? Before plus the plus or minus. So it's a positive seven-fourths plus or minus one-fourth. Now, is this an answer no. where I need to leave it just this way, or I, I need to separate it? Separate it. 
I need to separate this. So when I separate, I get x equals 7 fourths plus 1 fourth, or I get the other answer, x equals 7 fourths minus 1 fourth. And you see when I write it this way, there's more simplifying to do. What do you get for the left one? I get 8 fourths, which is just 2. two. 7 minus 1 gives me 6 over 4. <coughs> that reduces to give me 3 halves. Now look at these numbers. Look at these solutions. Aren't these nice? Those are nice. Do you know what that means? They're nice. Not only <laughs> does it mean that they're nice, but it means that the best method for me to have gotten these is by factoring. If you think you're going to be mad at me, then stop the video now. But if I look at 2x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0, one of the first things you always want to look for is to see if it factors. This is a nice trinomial. Let's see what happens here. If I break down the 2x squared, I'll use 2x and x. What do you know about your signs? They're both negative. To multiply, you get a positive 6. One of the ways to break down the 6 is with what? One 2 and 3 or 1 and 6? But if you use 2 and 3, gonna, oh, putting no. the 2 and putting the 3 here, what do you get on the inside? Negative 3. Negative 3, what's on the outside? Negative 4. Negative 3 and negative 4 is negative 7. It works out. If you finish using the zero factor theorem, that means x equals what? 3 or 2. 3 halves or x equals what? So sometimes you can solve these guys by factoring.